Well, I, f I find that every time I make a new movie, it's like going back to film school in a sense. I mean, I've got a whole collection of experiences that really serve me well. So, so I, I have the history of different genres and different challenges that come with each genre. But every time I start a new movie, it's like going back to, to the first day of school. I'm nervous. I'm, I'm, I'm unsure of myself. All those things are, by the way, good values for me because, because my fuel comes from not knowing exactly how to approach something. I get better ideas, uh, uh, not from confidence, but from at least being open to changing everything if a good idea suddenly arrives. Well, the first movie I saw was The Greatest Show on Earth. I was three years old in Philadelphia. My dad took me to the theater. I saw that movie, and it made, it made a profound impression on me. Um, because when I got, I, I, because they had a big train wreck in The Greatest Show on Earth, two trains came together. Actually, not two trains, a train and a car hit. The train derailed and people were hurt and killed. And I got interested in Lionel Trains because of that movie. And I remember, um, because of The Greatest Show on Earth, uh, when my dad got me my first train set, this is years later, I, I remember that movie, and then I used to use his 8 millimeter Brownie movie camera to film train wrecks, trying to imitate the great train wreck. And, in that film I saw at three. And I think in a way that somehow that sort of perverse, sensational subject matter began to suck me into a hobby which became a profession. In terms of opportunities, it was a lot harder to get started when I was growing up and wanting to be a movie director almost at 12 years old because when I first picked up a camera in order to get a... Where were you living when you first I was in up Scottsdale. You were in Arizona? Arizona. And I, I, got, I, I was looking for a way to get fulfill the requirements to get a photography merit badge. I was in the Boy Scouts of America. And the requirement was to tell a story with still photographs. And my dad's camera broke. He did not have a still camera, like the Brownie Kodak that he had wasn't working. So I, he, but he did have an eight millimeter Kodak, eight millimeter movie camera. And I went to the Scoutmaster and I said, C can we change the rules just so I can tell a story on film because we don't have a still camera. And the Scoutmaster said, go ahead and do it. So I, I, I got three minutes worth of film, which is, by the way, all of those cameras used to take, these little three-minute rolls of film, and I made this Western on a weekend. I just figured, uh, you know, you do a shot in this direction of bad guys with their guns and masks on, and my sisters played the damsels in distress and the stagecoach. And I made this little movie and then showed it to the Boy Scout troop that weekend, and they all went crazy for it. They screamed and applauded, and I suddenly got bitten by that bug, and I wanted to do this for the rest of my life. It was like, became so clear to me. My father thought I was going to follow in his footsteps and become a computer engineer. But I was very bad at math. And he, he gave up and he at one point said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be a, a movie director. He says, well, you're going to be sorry because that, that's going to lead to, to, to disappointment. And, uh, and I said, no, I think I, can, I think I can make it in the movie business. My dad used to tell me war stories and I was infatuated with the war. And in fact, my first three or four eight millimeter home movies when I was 12, 13, 14, 15 years old were World War II movies. I just never had a big thought about what I could do with movies in those days. I was infatuated with the control that movies gave me in creating a sequence of events or a feeling or a train wreck with two Lionel trains that I could then repeat and see over and over and over again. And I think it was just a realization that I could change the way I perceived life through a funnel or, a, or another, another medium to make it come out better for me. I was about 13, 14 years old, and we had an airport called Sky Harbor Airport in Phoenix, Arizona. And there were a lot of World War II planes just sitting around on the tarmac out there. And I went to the airport, I went to some person at the airport, I forgot who it was, and I said, I'm making a little home movie for school. For school. Is it, is it possible we could get into the cockpit of one of these World War II airplanes? And he said, absolutely, unlock the cockpit, and we got in. And you sat your friends in them, filmed them, and then intercut it with dogfight footage. Yeah, I found, you know, 8 millimeter. you can go to any camera store and buy, buy basically documentary footage of World War II. So I just basically looked at that first, selected the shots, and I just backed my story into the existing World War II footage that I could get my hands on. 
for skinny little Stevie Spielberg from Phoenix, Arizona, son of a computer specialist and a former concert pianist who divorced when he was young, making movies was a way to compete and get attention, a source of self-pride, a way to overcome his lack of popularity and his loneliness. I never ever got in with the, uh, the insiders, the real insiders from school, sports, jocks, that kind of thing. I was always the wimp. The wimp? Yeah, I was always the wimp. <laughs> But uh, I really enjoyed... Uh, and movies let movies. you do what? Well, movies sort of uh, uh, just gave me a chance to, you know, to, to be the leader of my own group, I guess. I lived in a beautiful house, and I got as far as the carpeting and the drapes in the Steinway, and then he took over. And my house, from the time I can remember, was the studio. I think the big, big seminal moment in my life was when I saw Lawrence of Arabia for the first time. You know, in 70 millimeter first week it was showing in Phoenix, Arizona. I believe it was at the Palm Theater when it came out. And I was around, I, I suppose I was around 15 years old, perhaps, when it came out, 14, 15, around there. And that's when I, 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 I wanted to, after that movie, after that experience, I wanted to make films, not just as a hobby, but I wanted to go into the profession. And I began looking for ways to, to do that. I realized I could make life better for me through this little eight millimeter rinky-dink medium. I felt really good about my life, myself, and possibly bringing some other people into this amazing medium to enjoy what I was putting together. And so the first thing I thought of was selfishly was myself, and the second thing I thought of was bringing an audience in to see if what I was making was having an effect on anybody other than myself. <laughs> 